fish report. Hanging out the fish report. Hanging out the fish report. Hanging out the fish report. For your latest news in high school sports, tune in to the fish report. Don't need no bed, don't need no pool. When you tune in to the fish report. Hanging out the fish report. Hanging out the fish report. You got Craig and TK. Coming to you live from Studio F in Rushi, Ohio, it's the Fish Report Live Show with your hosts, Craig Fissinger and Ken Francis. Welcome everyone to another Fish Report Live. My name is Craig Fissinger. That's Ken Francis. And back in our sound room, you know who's back there. It's TK and Heavy D. And can we try to keep TK and Heavy D out of the public as much as possible? Do give them about 60 seconds of airtime every week. But uh, our own Heavy D actually got out and about this week, did an interview for us uh, with your son, Nolan Francis, uh, putting the finishing touches on his high school basketball career at Rushi. And Heavy D and Nolan both did a pretty good job of their interview, didn't they? They absolutely did. You know, uh, Heavy D, nice to get him out uh, in front of the uh, big crowd there. And, uh, you know, I think he's well used to that in his other profession. So he did a very good job. And, uh, you know, appreciate him taking the time out to interview Nolan. Yeah, we're going to look forward to seeing that interview here in just a little bit. And then we're also going to be talking live to a coach that we know very well over in Fort Laramie, don't we? We've had her on the show before, Craig. She's one of the most outstanding high school girls basketball coaches, uh, not just in the area, Craig, but throughout the state of Ohio. And that's Carla Siegel, uh, the leader of the Fort Laramie Lady Redskins. Uh, it's been to several state tournaments, Craig. She brought home the crown in 2013. She's in her 16th season at the helm of the Fort Laramie Redskins. And uh, she's once again got her Lady Redskins in the district championship game on Saturday. All right. Well, speaking of those Redskins, we're going to get to tonight's trivia question. And it's a Redskins Lady Redskins basketball question, isn't it? It is, Craig. And the question is, what Fort Laramie girls basketball coach holds the record for the most victories at Fort Laramie? Most victories. Most victories, girls basketball. Is it Carla Siegel, Jane Puppelman, Sue Kaufman, or Dave McFeely? All right. Well, I know all four of those were coaches, and, and I think I can uh, I can think I can narrow it down to a couple, but I, I, I am going to ask the Fish Report viewers out there for a little bit of help. So if you're watching us on the Fish Report live page, you can scroll down, answer that trivia question there, and check the results. If you're watching us on NK Telco Cable TV Channel 3, we will – have those results for you at the end of the show. All right, Ken, well, let's get the show started tonight, and we're going to start out talking some boys basketball. Don't want to forget about our friends over in Division Three, even though we like talking D4. Don't want to forget about Division Three and a couple games on Tuesday night over in the Tecumseh sectional. Let's check out uh, what happened there. Well, Craig, uh, like you said, a couple big games in the sectional semifinals there. Anna Arcanum. Arcanum came away with a controversial one-point victory, Craig. Heard a lot of stories behind that one, but uh, bottom line is move Arcanum out to the finals to take on the Tigers of Versailles. Versailles is going to be very tough to beat there. Look for the Tigers to move on and play the uh, sectional winner from the Western Brown sectional. All right, and uh, we know our Canham's coach over there, Marcus Bixler, actually married to a Rushi alum, a thousand point scorer for Rushi. So mm-hmm. know a little bit about our Canham, and then of course we know for sales, our Raiders playing there earlier this year. Uh, but let's uh, jump ahead now, talk some Division Four to the Piqua sectional, and a couple games tonight in the Piqua Lower. Let's check those out, and why don't you tell the viewers what happened? Well, Craig from Garbage Gymnasium, uh, Mechanicsburg, Fort Laramie. Uh, Fort Laramie uh, easily moving out to the finals there. Uh, they'll play uh, Jackson Center Tigers. Jackson with a big victory tonight uh, over Farallon. Some people expected that to potentially be kind of a close game. Uh, Jackson Center just really threw the defensive glove on top of Farallon, uh, crushing the Jets for the, this year So um, or tonight. And uh, look for Fort Laramie Jackson Center to be a great basketball game, Craig. The two got together twice earlier this year. Jackson Center coming away with a victory both times. But uh, these two Shelby County League foes, Craig, they know each other very well. Look for them really to get after it. Uh, Fort Laramie going to try to push the pace, maybe make a little high-scoring game. Jackson Center, of course, Craig, just the opposite. Their defensive presence is phenomenal. And uh, Coach Elkert, uh, Coach Britton, they'll both have their teams ready to go. Should be a fantastic game Saturday night. Yeah, you know, in the past week, the I know the all Shelby County Athletic League teams came out, and and some of these guys that were named a first team, you really see why they're they're, they're first teamers when uh, you see games like tonight guys like Gavin Wildermuth uh, going up against Nathan Lessing uh, one, uh, another first 
teamer. Gavin actually shutting him down with his defense. Uh, you can pr- probably guess who Gavin's going to be guarding in that Fort Army game. Another first teamer. I'm betting. absolutely Craig. Uh, he'll be paired uh, man to man. I'm sure with Devin Braun, the high scoring uh, uh, high flyer from the Fort Army Redskins. And uh, you know they again it'll be the third time they've seen each other this year. Actually though, Devin actually did not play the last two times the, or the last time these two teams got together. He was actually ill that game, so that uh, could kind of play a little bit of an effect on the game. They won't. Uh, quite uh, know how Fort Lormie's game plan may be because it will be a somewhat of a different team with Fort Lormie taking the court this Saturday night versus what it was a few weeks ago. Yeah, that should be an interesting one. And let's jump up, of course, to the Piqua Upper, the uh, bracket that we know real well, and our Rushi Raiders are, are in the sectional finals there, aren't they? Craig, sectional finals for the Raiders. Uh, I told 17th time in the last 21 years, I believe, the Raiders wow. have been in the sectional finals. Pretty impressive uh, for Rushi's coach, Paul Bremigen. Uh, they cruised to the finals, easily beating Houston and Bradford. Uh, triad, Craig, they made their way out there. They're the five seed, but Craig, but they come in with a 20 and four record. Probably one of the best five seed records you'll find in the state of Ohio at 20 and four. Uh, they'll pose a definite problem for the Raiders. Uh, they really like to get the ball out and go with it. Uh, they shoot the three very well. They fast break all the time. Had a very nice win over a very good layman team last night. So uh, look for uh, Rushi and Triad to really get after it with each other. Uh, expect a huge crowd. I was impressed with Triad's crowd uh, the other night in the semifinal game. They brought a ton of people. I'm sure Rushi will do the very same. So uh, look for a lot of excitement in the Piqua sectional finals in both brackets. Yeah, of course, we had uh, layman coach John Tolf on this show a couple weeks ago talked to him I don't imagine this is the way he wanted to go out he had a very talented group of seniors there he's going to be losing a lot next year isn't he yes he will Craig uh, they started five seniors uh, their first uh, player off the bench was a senior uh, we've been seeing uh, kids like Greg Spearman Jackson Fronts, uh, both 1,000-point scores, Craig. They both recently reached that milestone. Uh, great players, uh, and, uh, you know, they uh, they just did not have the kind of year, I'm sure, that they wanted to have, Craig. But, uh, again, congratulations to those two guys on 1,000-point uh, scores in their career. Yeah, I kind of expected our Rushi Raiders to be matched up against those Cavaliers. Of course, it's going to be a little bit different than that on Friday night. And speaking of those Rushi Raiders, one of the leaders on the team all season, of course, has been senior Nolan Francis. Again, as we mentioned at the top of the show, our heavy D had a chance to sit down with Nolan earlier this week and chat with him about his season and his career and let's check out the video and see what he had to say. Nolan Francis is putting the finishing touches on a brilliant four-year career for the Rushi varsity basketball team. Just last week the senior captain was named first team all Shelby County Athletic League and then Nolan celebrated on Friday night by scoring his 1,000th career point in a tournament win over Houston. Fish Report's own Heavy D sat down with Nolan recently to talk about this season and his career and this is what he had to say. So Nolan, you've got a couple of milestones behind you now. What what's what are you looking forward to for the rest of the season? Well, at the beginning of the season, I was just looking forward to uh, competing for an SEL title, and we achieved that. And now I'm looking forward to trying to make a tournament run. Nolan, you've been playing varsity now, going on your fourth year. Uh, you dressed as a freshman, and got some playing time there. Tell me how how your play has changed over the years. Um, how you played as a freshman, and, and now what? How do you see yourself on the team as a senior? Well, as a freshman, I was looking up to the people above me, trying to learn things. And now as a senior, I'm trying to spread my knowledge of the game to the younger players and try to lead as uh, a captain supposed to. I noticed the other night during the Houston game, uh, with all the guys on the on the out there, you've been playing with these guys for about 10 years now. I noticed yeah. there's not a lot of chatter on the court. Tell me about that. Is there some kind of mental telepathy going on? Or how do you guys communicate? Because it's not really verbally. Well, we should actually probably communicate more verbally than what we do. Um, but, you know, I know we know where each other like to score, where they're going to be on the yeah. court, and we're used to playing with each other. For example, on Friday night, Gavin went for a steal, and then I ended up picking up the loose ball. I didn't even look where he was at. I just threw it behind my head, and it was right to him, and he got a two-hand dunk out of it. Yeah, I know you guys hang a lot through the, the off season and through the season, and you guys are pretty tight, and it shows on the court. Yeah, for sure. How do you guys stay loose before a game and keep it light? Well, we got to practice hard before the week before that game. And then in the locker room, you know, we'll listen to some music. Dave York's always in charge of the music. Yeah. He dances a little bit. And then um, we say a pr- the athlete's prayer as a team before we walk out. And then right before the cheerleaders lead us out, I say, Lady of Victory. And then the rest of the team says, pray for us. And then we head out. Nolan, you've been playing under the same coaching staff for the last four years. Coach Leffel was a freshman. 
then Coach Borchers, um, he coached the JV team, and I know he helps out with varsity, uh, Spence Kadanya and Paul Bremigen. What kind of chemistry do they have, and what, what kind of uh, perspective do they bring to the team? Uh, they're, they're all a lot of fun. You know, they um, kind of let, let us be ourselves in practice. We joke around sometimes, but, and then we're, we're, we're serious at the same time. And I know they work hard, always scouting for us and coming up with good game plans for each game. Nolan, you've been playing ball for as long as I can remember. Ever, ever since you could probably walk, you've been playing ball. Over the years, who's been the most influential player or most influential person in your life in terms of basketball? I definitely have to say my dad. Um, he would always go up to the gym with me, even when he was busy. And um, I know he would always want to leave before I did. <laughs> Nolan, whether your season ends this, this Friday or whether you continue down the tournament trail, when it's all said and done, what's going to be some of your most notable memories from over the years? Um, uh, definitely have to go with the back-to-back -back county championships, and then along with that, playing with my classmates. You know, not everybody gets to play with nine other classmates their senior year. That's something I think is pretty cool. All right, and that was Rushi Sr., Nolan Francis. I want to go back to the sound room and talk to Heavy D. Heavy D, nice job with that interview. I kind of see a future for you in that maybe out there in our studio are doing some interviews. I want to get your opinion on how things went and what you thought of uh, Rushi Sr. star Nolan Francis. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm okay in front of the mic. Uh, no problem there. Uh, Nolan's a great kid, comes from good stock. Um, <laughs> the whole time I was sitting there interviewing Nolan, all I could think about was, you know what? One on one, me against Nolan. I think I could take him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm going to bet against that, Heavy D. I've seen Nolan play. It's been a while since I've seen you play, but uh, I'm going to have to put my bets on uh, on Nolan on that one. So, all right, listen. I want to go to UTK, and you know, speaking of those Rushi Raiders matching up with Triad on Friday night, I want to ask, what are those Raiders going to have to do to come out on top in this game? I think a couple of key points. Uh, one thing is they got to close out on defense. Triad's got some nice three-point shooters, and a couple of them spread around the floor. So they're going to be quick, close out on those uh, perimeter passes. Uh, the second key, I think, would be getting back on defense on missed shots when they when they don't pick up the rebound. Uh, Triad likes to get out and run, uh, turn on that uh, rebound, and throw the ball down the floor. So our guards have to pay attention. Uh, our big men underneath are going to have to make some contact to make sure they don't get that quick throw out. Uh, those those two things take care of that, and uh, run our offense, I think, will be in good shape. Yeah, you know, uh, Triad plays over there in that Ohio Heritage Conference, and we don't know a lot about that just because we don't play uh, or see a lot of opponents from over there. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of look at that as maybe not being the toughest conference in, in the area, but one thing you don't want to do in tournament, of course, is, is overlook somebody because uh, w about the time you do, they're going to beat you, aren't they? Yeah, you can't look past anybody. Uh, it happens all the time. Uh, I, I think we can name a couple times this year in the tournament and last year as well. So you got to be focused. And I think, I think they will be, like Nolan says, the, the coaching staff does a good job understanding who they're going up against, and they'll get the boys focused. All right. Well, good stuff. Uh, thanks for that report, guys. And, and uh, Ken, I want to ask you, you know, Heavy D asked Nolan some notable memories from his career. I want to ask from a dad's point of view, uh, when this is all done with Nolan, once he wraps up his, his basketball career at Rushi, what's some notable memories you're going to have of his career? Well, Craig, uh, first thing you got to look at is that from a team aspect, uh, the two Shelby County League championships, uh, the district championship, uh, Coach Bremgen's 400th career victory at the Pickle Holiday Tournament his junior year was very special, as well as this year when he became Shelby County League's all-time winning coach, win number 417 for Coach Bremgen. Uh This year's victory over St. Henry Redskins, uh, they were led by uh, – Mac Player of the Year, Ryan Mike Sell, and, uh, you know, that was a very special win. And uh, flying to the hoop, Craig, of course, that was a lot of fun. You remember that. And uh, But from an individual standpoint, Craig, you know, I remember a lot of buckets. I remember a lot of plays. I remember a lot of games. But uh, one uh, possession, Craig, that will always stick in my mind, and that was the video you shortly showed ago when uh, he received the uh, – the entry pass from his good friend, Justin Garrity. Nolan spun on the block, laid it in for his 1,000th point. Never forget it. Yeah, it's a lot of neat moments this season already. We just hope it can continue on for a little longer, don't we? Absolutely. All right, well, listen, that's going to do it for the first half of our show, but stay right there when we come back. We're going to be talking some girls basketball. We're going to talk about those tournament brackets, and we're going to have that big interview with Fort Army coach Carter Siegel. Stay there. We'll be right back. Well, I'm digging on you. I'm digging on your home. What's poor boy to do? You got me acting a fool. I'm digging on your home. I'm digging on you. I'm digging on your home. What's poor boy to do? You got me black and blue. I'm digging on your home. I've been watching from my window. 
just can't get my eyes off of you, girl. You don't know me. You don't know I'm looking. All right, welcome back to the second half of Fish Report Live, everyone. Before the break, we were talking some boys' tournament basketball. We're going to change the subject now to girls' tournament basketball, and let's get things started, Ken. We're going to go up there to uh, actually D4 up in the Walpock District where they're actually just trying to catch up with us down here in the southwest. We're, we're going to be talking district finals here in the southwest. They're talking district semis up there, but let's check and see what a couple of the local teams are doing in the district semis. Yeah, Craig, uh, in the northwest bracket, uh, they always do uh, things a little different than they do down in the southwest boys and girls both uh they just play two rounds in the sectionals and then two rounds in the district so same amount of games just uh classified a little bit differently but uh, you got marion local and ada battling out in one semifinal upper Scioto and new knoxville in the other half craig uh you know first year for the super sectionals up there um you know some teams wanted it and uh upper Scioto obviously is enjoying it because uh, they're out there as the number two seed in the sec district semifinals against New Knoxville. So look for Marion Local and uh, probably New Knoxville will be an MAC uh, clash there for the district championship. Yeah, well, a little side note on that New Knoxville game. Meg Reinecke, I believe, maybe just nine points from getting her thousandth career point. I think she ended the regular season with 970, and and I, I'm, I'm sure they're more concerned about a win first and foremost, but uh, maybe a little uh, little extra bonus if New Knoxville can win and Meg can get her, her thousandth Absolutely. Well. It'd be a great achievement for a great player. Uh, lots of seniors. Craig uh, actually and a few juniors even racking up that southern point here in the last few weeks boys and girls both yeah they sure are now let's jump ahead and talk some d3 and head down to actually Springfield and got some local teams down there as well what do we got in the d3 uh sectional or district well, Craig finals. in the district uh finals there we're going to have uh Versailles taking on Georgetown and Anna taking on Cincinnati Madeira uh, look for a couple good games there, Craig. Uh, it'd be nice to see Anna uh, get out of that game. Uh, I think they're going to have their hands full, but I think they can win it. Uh, look for Versailles to win that clash between the two number one seeds in the lower portion of the bracket. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we're good luck for one more game for Caleb Ben's been talked to her a few weeks ago, and uh, we've been good luck for him so far. Hopefully they can move ahead one That's more game. That's for sure. All right, and the, uh, the district finals, we're most interested in down there in tip. A couple teams that we know real well in those finals couple district championship games this Saturday, Craig. Uh, the one thirty game pits the Fort Lawmy Redskins. Uh, Coach Carla Siegel, of course, has got her team primed and in the district finals once again, taking on Fayetteville Perry. Look for the Redskins to advance to the regionals. Uh, lower portion of – or the uh, other district final there has the Rushi Raiders taking on Southeastern. That's the 3 o'clock game, Craig. I foresee the Raiders not having a whole lot of trouble there with Southeastern either. Look for a regional semifinal clash there between the two Shelby County League uh, – uh, rivals uh, next Thursday night at 7 o'clock uh, would be my prediction, and it should be a good one. Yeah, that's what I love about this show. We're able to make those predictions, and uh, a lot of times they come true, don't they? They do. <laughs> and when they don't come true, we just don't talk about that's it. That's right. That's right. Well, speaking of those Fort Army Redskins, Ken, uh, their, their head coach, Carla Siegel, has actually taken them to this district game the last eight consecutive years. We're happy to have her live on the phone right now. Coach Siegel, welcome to Fish Report Live, and thanks for joining us. 
Oh, thank you, Craig. Ken, it's so nice to be on your show again. All right. Well, listen, congrats on getting to the district final game again. I know it's certainly nothing you ever take for granted. Uh, but let me ask you, when you looked at this team at the beginning of the year, Coach, with all those senior starters missing from last year, girls like Darian Rose, Renee Meyer, Meg Wester, Heidi, actually had eight seniors in all. Uh, be honest with me. I mean, did you say, hey, no problem, we'll just get the, those girls replaced? Or was there, was there any concern about getting back to being as good as you were last year? Well, I think, um, you know, that's always a question, but I, I do believe that we have a strong JV program, and I know that we had girls that were coming up with, you know, not as much varsity experience, but they had good JV experience. So you never, you know, you never go at the beginning of the year, you never think about March. You just think about those first 22 games, and then hopefully you can make your run. And um, I do think some of those girls, those juniors, um, have stepped up well this year. And, you know, I think, you know, we have good senior leadership with Kelly, Hallie, and um, um, Janelle, and they're doing a great job. And then Jessica Berger, this is her third year on varsity. But um, I'm really pleased with Holly Fry. I think she's doing a good job uh, filling in, in that post for us. And um, Olivia Quinter's doing a great job coming off the bench. Um, sometimes I joke with her, she's our sixth starter. And, you know, I think, you know, Maddie brandy has been doing much better. Katie hoyne has been doing better. Claire uh, Kazmaier, Taylor Gasson. So I, I think the junior class is really stepping up strong in these last three or four weeks have been great for us. All right, well, you mentioned your junior star there, Jessica Berger. She was actually recently named the Shelby County Athletic League Player of the Year. I want to ask you, Coach, how do you handle the best player on your team being a junior? I mean, do you look at your seniors and say, hey, listen, girls, this is Jess's team, or, or is that not, not necessarily how that works? No, honestly, you know, with Jess being, you know, a junior – she was playing varsity as a freshman when Hallie and Janelle and Kelly got moved up to varsity. So pretty much those four, they're just great teammates and they're great friends. There is no, this is your team, this is my team. It's just, it's those four girls. Um, they're, they're the letter winners from last year. This, this is their team. And um, all four of them were voted captains by their teammates, and I think that was a great honor for them. So just just slides in nicely with them. I mean, I, I don't think there's a senior-junior relationship at all. It's just... We're a team. Coach, hi. This is Ken Francis. Uh, let's take a look at your Saturday sectional final game versus Fairlawn. Uh, you know, Fairlawn, of course, uh, a very one-dimensional team there, so you did a nice job locking down defensively. But one thing when I looked at, the, at your stat line, uh, you guys shot 18 three-pointers. Uh, made six of them, 33%, you know, and as a coach you're thinking, okay, that's, that's not bad. Uh, but is this a typical game for the Redskins to, to shoot this many threes, and, and do you see this trend continuing? Um, I don't think it, it's typical at all. Um, you know, we, we like to get the, the ball into our post players. We look at those high percentage shots, that's for sure. But in the game against Fairlawn, you know, the third time we played them, um, they know that Kelly and Holly scored a ton of points, and um, Fairlawn did a great job of packing it in. And they left our guards wide open. And um, what people don't know about Hallie is, you know, unfortunately she, you know, she struggled at the beginning of the year. Um, but you know, our, our joke is, you know, the volleyball team went so far in the tournament run that when she came to us, she still had her setter hands. And uh, her outside shooting, it, it, it took us about 10 games to get it back on track. And um, in the last, I think, six games, she's hit 17 three-pointers. And uh, her confidence level is good. And she has a green light to shoot him when she's open. And in a game like against Fairlawn, they were in that 2-3 zone. They left her open a lot. I think she took 11 out of the 18 three-point shots. So um, she's doing okay. I, I, is it something that we want? No. But if it's there, we're going to take it. Um, Howie has the green light to shoot. Jess Berger is a pretty good three-point shooter. Janelle Hoyne can hit him, too. So if, if teams are going to give that to us, we'll take them. Coach, let's talk about your upcoming game on Saturday. Uh, it's versus Fayetteville Perry. Fayetteville is out of the Southern Hills Athletic League. You know, hard to get a good scouting report on a team like this. You don't see them that often. You don't see the teams in their league ever, typically. Um, but uh, an interesting team. Uh, they're actually led by a junior star by the name of Samantha Murphy. Uh, Samantha's coming off a broken leg from over the summer. Uh, she's a phenomenal basketball player. She played a lot of highly competitive AAU, had the injury. She's back, and she's leading them again, um, as well as a couple of their seniors, uh, Lincoln Smith and Carly Burroughs. Uh, what do you feel about this uh, Fayetteville Perry team? What do you need to do well? What are their strengths? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you guys, you guys at the Fish Report, you do, you do your homework. You, you've got a lot of good information there. Um, 
Yeah, you know, we played Fayette Del Perry for the first time last year in the regional finals, um, and that was a great game. It was a high-scoring game. Um, they lost a lot of their, their scoring last year, and I, I said we had with Darian Rose. But um, I think this year, you know, Fayette Del Perry, um, they're looking at this game as a rematch. You know, they want to get back at us. Uh, they do have a lot of experienced players on their team, like you mentioned, um, but I like to think that our experienced players, the four that I mentioned earlier today, will match them equally. And then plus we have Holly Fry. And I do like our bench. I think our bench is a little bit deeper and a little bit stronger than theirs. Uh, we'll definitely get after them and we'll pressure them. Um, I think their their league and their conference place is a little bit uh, not as physical as ours, not as pressured as ours. So we'll get after them and we'll try to create some turnovers and hopefully get some transition baskets and uh, get the scoring going in our way early in the game. Coach, speaking of Fayetteville, uh, their head coach over there, Toby Sheets, he's in his 27th year at coaching girls basketball. Uh, you know, yourself, you're, uh, you've are you got a couple years under your belt as well. You're in your 16th season at the helm of the Redskins. Uh, two veteran coaches squaring off district championship game. But but what do you see has changed in during your time period as head coach of the Redskins? Well, Ken, um, I that's a tough question to answer, but I, I think that you know, obviously I'm, I'm a little bit older, and I hope that that becomes um, knowledge. Um, I wish I knew, you know, 16 years ago what I knew now. It made, it made the beginning a lot easier. Um, so I do believe that I, I'm a little bit wiser than I was in the beginning. Um, the other thing is, is, I think in the beginning I was so locked in on, on one part of the game, and that was the defensive part. Um, as a player, uh, I was more of a defensive player than an offensive player, and it was just something that I just – gravitated to and even in when I played in college I just I understood the defensive end so much better than the offensive end and when I first started coaching here at Army, I was I was all defense I was just like you know we got to have defense and um, luckily about eight years ago uh, I had to change that philosophy because yeah defense is great and wonderful but if you're not score important you know it, you can't win very many games so I think over the years I've, I've developed um, my offensive game a lot better and obviously I've had lots of help with my assistant coaches I, I can't take all the credit um, they, they do a wonderful job helping me out. But I, I think that I'm a more balanced coach on both ends of the floor than I was at the beginning. Hey, Coach, listen, one more quick question, and we'll let you go. But uh, I saw that your boys actually just won here a short time ago. They're playing on the sectional finals on Saturday night at 7 o'clock. Your girls are playing on Saturday at 1 o'clock. Do you have any advice out there for Redskins fans that are deciding which uh, which game to go to? Which one should they go to, Coach? Well, first of all, I'd like to congratulate Coach Britton and his team for winning tonight. That's awesome. And I wish them the best of luck on Saturday. And as far as the Redskin Nation, I mean, I, I know what they're going to do. They're going to go to both games because that's what you do in March. You know, you, you get as many games as you can and under your belt. So I encourage them to be at the 1 o'clock game and the 7 o'clock game. All right, great stuff, Coach. Uh, you know, you've done a great job uh, with the Redskins once again this year, and uh, you always have, and we really appreciate uh, you taking time to be on our show with us tonight. Good luck to you on Saturday. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Craig, so Thanks, much. Coach. I appreciate being on your show. Yeah. All right. That was the head coach of the Fort Army Redskins, Carla Siegel. And, Ken, uh, always fun to talk to her. She's uh, one of our favorite coaches in the area, I know. And, and uh, um, we hope that they win, and we hope that the Rushi Raiders win, and maybe we can see those girls for a third time this season. That would be a great game, Craig. We'd look forward to that. All right. And, you know, you mentioned that Samantha Murphy, that girl for Fayetteville Perry. Again, they saw her last year. But the story about her is remarkable. Broke her leg last summer. She, uh, I guess if they let it heal naturally, I was reading the story on this, it was going to take like six months to heal. She decided, no, I'll stick a rod and some screws in there three months later she's playing soccer now she's playing basketball and that kind of seems like one of those teams of destiny you know so we'll see you know if, if they win it's going to be uh, one of these like i said a team of destiny story but i, I wouldn't uh, i wouldn't put anything past fort Army. that's right modern day medicine craig it does some crazy stuff nowadays all right one more quick thing too i do did want to mention saw that the all mac awards came out this week and i think a lot of people were wondering you know who's going to get it kyle orange who's averaging 30 points a year or ryan Mike Sell, who who led his team to a uh, conference title. Were you surprised at all when Mike Sell got it over over Arns? Not at all, Craig. I think the coach has made a wise decision over there. I think Kyle Arns is a fantastic basketball player. He's going to be a great uh, player at Michigan State. And uh, But when you look at the two, when they battled head-to-head, -head, when you look at the season, uh, St. Henry came out on top in the league standings. Uh, they were undefeated. Uh, Versailles had, I think, four league losses. And uh, when the two battled head-to-head, -head, you know, uh, Ryan Mike Sell just had an outstanding basketball game both phenomenal players taking nothing away from either one but when it came to player of the year ryan mike so was number one yeah i think that's what it boiled down to was those uh 
the, the conference matchup and the, and the head-to-head matchup. So, all right, Ken, well, listen, we're about out of time. Do you want to get to that trivia question? Why don't you ask me the question again, and we'll check with the, the sound room on the telemetrics back there. All right, Craig, uh, talking Fort Lauderdale Redskin Lady Basketball, who is the – Holds the career record for most victories in Fort Lormy. Was it Carla Siegel, Jane Puppelman, Sue Kaufman, or Dave McFeely? All right. Well, again, I know all four of them coach, so he wasn't throwing me uh, any curveballs there. But uh, I think I can narrow it down to Coach Puppelman or Coach Siegel. I'd like to think it was Coach Siegel since we had on our show tonight. But uh, I want to go back to the sound room. Guys, any help back there? Yeah, we've got uh, Coach Puppelman by a hair. Coach Puppelman by a hair. Well, you know what? I'm looking at my my Twitter. I got Rushi Raider Sports on Twitter right now telling me Coach Puppelman. And I also got my buddy KB just texting me, says Jane P as well. So even though I thought we were going to go, it would be Siegel because we had her on the show tonight. Apparently her 16 seasons aren't enough. So I'm going to go with Coach Puppelman. You made the right choice, Craig. Uh, Coach Puppelman uh, is the current leader. However, Carlos, uh, Coach Siegel is narrowing down on her. Most likely will be passing her. I think it, she's within a one year. I think she's within about uh, 15, 20 games of catching her right now. All right. Well, the answer to that question will probably change then next year. Huh? Probably will. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us tonight. I do want to say special thanks to our guests, Rushi's Nolan Francis and Fort Army's Carla Siegel. Ken and I and the crew, we're all going to be back again next week talking some more tournament basketball. So until then, Everyone have a great rest of the week and good night. Hanging at the fish report. 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 For your latest news in high school sports, tune in to the fish report. Don't need no bed, don't need no pull. When you tune in to the fish report. Hanging at the fish report.